everybody, I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to a fantastic new episode of VO Buzz Weekly. Yep, and on the show today we have Mary Lynn Wisner, and she is going to fill your mind with lots of great stuff. She is awesome, and we're going to talk to her right now. You guys, our guest is simply amazing. She is the owner and casting director of Voices Voice Casting for more than 25 years. She is also a coach, a presenter, and the creator of an amazing new voiceover app that we're going to talk all about. Mm -hmm. So, if you're ready to get completely buzzed, we are too with the fabulous and lovely Mary Lynn Wisner. Mary Lynn Wisner. Yay! Thank you. Thank you Welcome so much for being show. here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, so, it's been a while in the making. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have to tell the story really quick. Yes. But uh, So we're sitting here at home, and Bob Bergen <laughs> is at a function, uh, Voice uh, Atlanta. Voice right? over mm -hmm. 2014 Atlanta. There you Correct. go. And Bob's like emailing me. I just saw Mary Lynn Wisner <laughs> on stage. you got to have her on the show. She's amazing. Blah, blah. And I'm like... Well, we'd love to have her on the show. Here's her email. Here's her phone number. And then we reached out to you. And, and here's a check to Bob. Yeah. <laughs> and here's a check to Bob. But it turns out that we'd actually been trying to reach you. But yes. you didn't know. We had a wrong email well, or something like that. We had wrong information. So, so all that stuff we said about you. excited to have Thank you here. You. It's Thank been yeah, a long so time coming. Thank yes. You. But now Thank we you. have even more to talk about. Yeah. Yay. We were just waiting for your app to come out and your career right. to really it's take timing. off. So. It's timing. It's timing. It's <laughs> timing. Yeah. Well, so, thank you. Absolutely. And let's get right on into it here. You started your, your whole career in the on, on, on camera world. Right. right. I actually, I started, uh, yeah, I grew up in the business. My father was a producer and grew up here in the Valley. And, um, I did uh, I did commercials when I was a teenager just for fun and kind of for money in college and uh, but I knew I really didn't want to be on that side of the the business and when I graduated from college I decided that I kind of liked the agent side of things and I applied for a job um, as a voiceover assistant agent I really knew nothing about voiceovers mm. um, but lucky for me, it was with Don Pitts, mm. who at that time was kind of the king of voiceover yeah, agents. Absolutely. And our that was clients, Commercials Unlimited, yes, right? Yes, yeah. it was. And our clients were, you know, Orson Welles and Casey Kasem and June Foray wow. and, you know, Daz Butler, the, 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 you know, the, the cream of the crop. And I was just in the booth every day with these people, um, many who are not even with us anymore. But it was a wonderful exposure to the voiceover mm -hmm. world. And after, um, after about like six or eight months, it wasn't that long, the owner, uh, Don went to go to another agency and kind of took all his people with me and the owner, with him, and the owner of the agency asked me if I wanted to stay and head up the voiceover department. And I said, sure, <laughs> not quite knowing what I was getting myself into. And then being completely overwhelmed, but I did it and kept it in the black, which was a major wow. accomplishment. Yeah. And, um, you know, built up that department. And then after about, you know, two years, um, I got asked by Bob Lloyd, who owned the voice caster, to mm -hmm. come on board there and be a casting director. And I was kind of ready for a change. Yeah. Um, so I jumped on board and fell in love with casting because mm -hmm. every day was different. Um, you know, I could be casting an animation series and three commercials and a narration, you know, or industrial all in one day. And that was really, I mean, this was the, the late 80s, early 90s, and that was just mm -hmm. the heyday of voiceover. Right. I mean, it was crazy yeah. rock and busy. We never stopped. Yeah. And um, after I was there about two years, I thought, you know, I could do this. I could do this better. So <laughs> <laughs> I just decided to open up my own place in 1990, and that's when Voices Voice Casting was born. Wow. Yeah, and I've been casting ever since. Going strong. My yeah, gosh. You've it. done yeah, thousands. And, do you have even any idea how many thousands of things you've cast? I thought of counting it one day because I keep, I have like a book, you know, that I've kept and yeah. I, I start to count and I never finish because I get distracted <laughs> or something. Can't count that I get distracted or whatever, but it, it, I know it's in the thousands and mm -hmm. it's, there's some, you know, pretty amazing projects that I've worked on over the years that oh, I'm very gosh, proud I'm of. Sure. Yeah. And I started teaching about, um, it was, I think it was about like 1994 uh, or something like that and have been teaching and coaching ever since, too. Wow. Well, and we should say that you do workshops and presentations all over the country, yep. and I mean, I had the good fortune to witness you guys at Voice 2012 <laughs> together on a panel, and I mean, it's just so cool. Your perspective is so insightful, and you are, as we always say on the show, in the trenches every mm -hmm. day. You see the good, the bad, and everything in between, yeah. and we want to talk about all that. 
Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> but let's let's start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people watching that are trying to get into voiceover to break in. Mm -hmm. Do you have any nuggets of wisdom for for someone? You know, the thing that I'm always telling actors, the most important thing is to stay true to yourself. The one thing that I really find, and, and it sounds kind of simple, but most people don't follow it, is they try to do the voice that they think they hear on the radio or TV. They, they're trying to do the voice that's, that's you know, seems to be booking a lot. Right. And they're not doing their own voice. And that sounds really simple, but most people don't do that. And once I kind of call them out on that in the booth, and and you know I'll, I'll just say something like, you know, just tell me about your day. What did you do today? Or, uh, you know, what's the name of your street? Or did you take your kids to school? Or just kind of the benign, boring mm -hmm. things. Um, I start to hear the real them, and I just say, that's the voice I want. Now, now read the script. And I think that's the biggest thing that. Um, you know, most actors that want to get into voiceover kind of need to overcome, mm -hmm. you know, and don't always think just because you've got this beautiful voice and everybody's yeah. always told you that you can do voiceovers because a lot of times uh, those people can't. They can't act. It's, right. It is voice acting. It's not just about having a great voice. So it's, um, again, being true to yourself in, in that sort of organic, you know, this is my voice, this is who I am, and then um, having the ability to act and... and um, you know, bring that copy to life. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So be yourself. Yeah. Don't, Don't try to imitate else. people. It's the best Although role imitating to play. imitating is good to actually learn some chops. <laughs> yeah. But always bring you to the table, right? Absolutely. Okay, very good. I love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So let's just say you get the you get the audition script and you have the specs and it says thirty five to forty real conversational sassy not too sassy energetic not too energetic the whole contradictory <laughs> yeah. direction when you read that um, from your perspective do you take that into consideration do you say well this is what I think it is based on who I am what is your opinion about that that's a tough one because most of the time what I find is copywriters and producers and ad account execs when they're writing these directions down they kind of don't know what they want. Mm. So they're going to throw out every little punch buzzword and that sort of thing to kind of see if there's a little nugget that you, as a talent, can, can pull from. And um, sometimes when I've run a casting session, I'll even not put any of that direction in there, mm. especially if it's a real person script. Yeah. You know, I'll say, just, just talk to me. Tell, read, you know, do the script. Just be yourself. And a lot of times I'll even have actors flip the copy over so they're not reading the words and they're just talking it. And then I'll have them flip it over again really quick because they're in that sort of right. same, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah same, that same, um, you know, mode. Um, so in answer to your question, I think most of the time they, the copywriter is just kind of searching for words that might help you mm -hmm. um, and it's really sort of up to you to, I think to decipher what the best you know direction is that fits that script right and, and yeah. it's it's tricky it is tricky and it it's is confusing tricky. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so Marilyn can you take us through the process of a, a casting of you casting a project mm -hmm. from from audition to actual job. Absolutely. Um, I will get a call or an email from um, the advertising agency, the account executive there or producer, or say it's a production company that's casting an animation film or something. Mm -hmm. Whoever it is that's looking for a voice, they will reach out to me and um, I will, and this is the difference between say like going to a casting director versus a pay to play. I mm -hmm. will spend the time with these people on the phone you know, talk to the copywriter if I need to, you know, go over the script with them, even, oh, I see you picked this kind of music, does that mean that the voice might be playing off of that? I really like to break it down. Yeah. And then um, I get all their specifics, and automatically, I mean, I've been doing this for so many years, my brain just starts going, you know, and yeah. I can think of voices in my head, and I just start writing names down. Um, and then um, I do it two ways, depending on the budget. I will either um, send the copy just right to the agents and say, I want to see so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so -and, -so, and please you know, give me about five more of your choices that you like, um, or I'll have them come into my office and we'll do a session that way. Um, I do like to direct all my sessions personally if I can because you know, my name goes out there too, yeah. And, yeah. and I 
I, I don't want them to ever have a reason not to hire a casting director, you know. So um, I take that very seriously. So, so, so even when you reach out to, to an agent and say, mm -hmm. blah, 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 you still want them to come into your place? No, that's there? the one time I don't. Okay. like. But I am very specific with the agent, and I'll even check in with the booth director sometimes and okay. say, how's it going, or do you have any questions? Yeah. Um, and then after I get the auditions back, and I keep it pretty small, you know, mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons you want to hire a casting director is you want to cut to the chase. You don't want to listen to 200 mm -hmm. actors. You want to listen to, you know, the, the 10 best guys in town. So um, I might call in 20 guys or so or, or have 20 guys read it, and then I'll listen to their auditions. So I get back the MP3s or I listen back from the auditions that day. So you only cast guys? No, girls too. Ah. Well, that's why she hasn't called me, guys and gals. <laughs> no, um, you actually were on something of mine right recently, and I thought, I wonder if she knows that's from me. I don't um, always know because it's from you know a you. lot of times they I'll put it, you know, I'll send it to I the know, agents, and they don't, you know, they retype them, and so I always. Some people say, I know many times we don't. You. I have yeah. no idea, but they should. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice. Yeah. 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 Then Sometimes you can, like, call. some agencies do and some don't because they retype in their own I would thing. say like, hi, Mary Lynn, in my slate. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's kind of fun. <laughs> anyway, um, because I'll say to somebody, God, that read you did on you know, McDonald's was great. How'd you know? <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, so after I get all the auditions back, I will listen to them. And I kind of make a short list first. I'll listen to like maybe three seconds of that audition mm -hmm. and just kind of put it over to the right side of my desktop. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, weed out the ones that aren't so, uh, and then go back and, and pick my favorite 10 or 15 or whatever. Good. And then send that to my client. And then um, a lot of times, I've, I've, I'm fortunate that I have some really great relationships with yeah. some of these producers I've worked with for years and years. And they'll say, you know, give me your two favorites. Or something like so that. They, yeah, they really yeah, trust your so opinion. They trust so, yeah, yeah, which is nice. So I, um, or they'll say, you know, we really like Bill, but Bob kind of had this nice texture. And I'll say, well, if you listen to Bill, he's got a great take too. So that shows a nice range, you know. So I try to help out that way if I can. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's pretty much it. And then they'll ultimately choose who they want. So what you're trying to say. Is that you actually <laughs> manipulate who gets the job? I don't. <laughs> I don't. I, I, I don't think that's exactly what no, she said. Chuck. I can't no, do that. No, no. I'm just trying to I cause trouble. That. <laughs> um, I can't do that. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, that's pretty neat, right? Yeah, it so, is yeah. neat. <laughs> Let's talk about the current trends. We've got okay. the non-union versus union, the pay-to-play sites, and the expectations of you on the casting side in mm -hmm. today's marketplace. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah, that's such a loaded question, really. It's because like, let's lean back and get a snack. We're going to have to do we, some we, dinner. We might be here a few Take hours. Take a deep breath. <laughs> okay. One, pay to play. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't disagree with the whole pay to play thing. And and I know maybe some of the, the founders of those sites might disagree with me. But um, from a coaching perspective, I think they're wonderful mm -hmm. as far as that goes. Or if, say, for, say for a beginner. You know, it's a great opportunity for you to get out there and get auditions every day. Mm -hmm. um, but be selective. You know, I, I, I peruse those every once in a while, and sometimes I see things on there that used to be huge, you know, union campaigns, and yeah. now they're, they're not. And yeah. um, if, if my whole point is, you know, I don't care if an actor does non-union. Um, I would like them to do a union job. I can't tell somebody not to do it. Um, but don't undersell yourself. You know, um, yeah. you, you got to set the bar. You have to, you know, um, value your talent and your worth. And so, you know, that's always my my words of wisdom out there to talent. Yeah. Is, you know, which are to, good words of yeah. wisdom. Yeah. Well, think about, you know, I mean, there are some wonderful non-union talent that I've worked with um, over the years, and it's not their fault. They just haven't been able to get in the union. Yeah. Um, but they're great. They're super talented. So they they have to get on those sites and, and do that. So I'm always telling them, you know, then don't ever take the, you know, don't ever take anything less than 250 or something like that. Right. So um, that's kind of my issue with the non-union thing is, is, you know, don't set the bar so low that, yeah. that you know. Well, you have some people out there doing sessions, doing work for like 30 bucks. Yeah, that's I mean, it's like, it's that's ridiculous. Atrocious. It's First atrocious. First of all, yeah, if you do jobs for $30, mm. you, that's it. You're going to be the $30 talent. And well, but some of them, I'm sorry to interrupt you, I'm sorry. It's okay, I'm used it, to it. it <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Can we have a second? <laughs> yeah. right here. 
I'm just so passionate about this. No, but it's, say, I'll for example, you do something that has an in perpetuity buyout, yeah. and you do it for 30 bucks or 50 bucks, and then you get into the union. You have that conflict. You're stuck. And you can't do that brand or that. I mean, and then what are you going to do? You're stuck. That's so. big. And, and um, it's just, it's, it's, you know, the, the problem with all this, you know, internet craziness now is, you know, everybody thinks they can do voiceover and there's so much, you know, advertising out there and coaching and classes and duh, and it's, you know, great. Everybody can do that. But um, no, everybody can't do voiceover. And I've heard those people that can't do voiceover. Yeah. And and, you know, I'm very protective of actors. You know, my daughter's an actress. You know, I'm very, very protective of actors being taken advantage of and and I don't I don't like to see that and I guarantee you the cheaper you do that job that will be the job that haunts you yep. they will never mm. be happy they'll come back for three and four revisions you will yeah. spend more time on that crappy fifty dollar job and then you know you going to a session and getting a you know a nice union rate and being protected by your union it always always happens yeah Absolutely. And that will be the spot yeah. that will run for six years and, you know. Yeah. So if the union is not in your forecast at the moment, just be particular highly, and set your bar selective. high so that you're yeah. not just... That's what I yeah. would say. I mean, and there are ways you can make a union, a non-union job union, you know, mm -hmm. going to a uh, signature mm -hmm. studio right. and so on. But if you're a non-union member, I can't tell anybody not to do it. Yeah. Um, and for many of my students, you know, I've said, that are non-union members, it's a great way to work out. You mm -hmm. get some great practice, and you, yeah. some of those sites, I think, give you feedback on your reads. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, you know, for that s scenario, I think it might be okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, let's talk about, because you, you earlier you were talking about, you know, you reach out to some agencies, and you say, hey, you know, let me have this name, this name, this name, let me a few others that you might think are great. Um, and then you end up with, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 people. And you said, well, I go to my, the top 10 that I feel have what it takes. And some of them are like, ooh. What makes you go, ooh, when you hear some of those <laughs> auditions that you're, you're, you're automatically like, that's not going to work? What are some things that actors do that make you say, no, that's not going to work? From an audition? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, there's just something I hear. First place, I, I listen to their slate. I listen to their slate. Um, but a lot of times, some of the agents, the talent agents send things in where the booth person slates it, so that's not that big a deal. Yeah. But um, I like to hear an ad lib. I'm very big on that. Um, I like to hear something that is, you know, a Stacyism at the beginning of a spot. You know, something that, because what I like to explain to actors is, look at it this way. I'm, say I do an audition. I'm getting back, you know, may, maybe 40 people. Yeah. And to me, they're just little MP3 files. Yep. I don't get to see your cute face. I don't get to see, you know, have that charming little talk with you or anything like that. I'm just getting back a bunch of files, which mm -hmm. is the majority of what casting people are getting back. Yeah. So when I click that on, I want to hear the way I would see your face. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I want to yeah. hear your personality. Mm -hmm. Most people don't talk like introducing. You know, we don't talk that way. So yeah. throw something in there that would be you. I like to hear that. And... Um, in the 20 plus blah, blah, blah years I've been casting, maybe two or three times has a producer said to me, don't let them ad lib, stick to the copy. They want to hear what you bring to that copy, how you bring it to life. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, sometimes it's not appropriate, you know, yeah. if it's an authoritative read yeah. or something like that. Yeah. But the trend right now is very real or that very hip, sarcastic, wry kind of person. So it really lends itself to that. So yeah. I like to hear how they brought themselves to the cop. I think that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. That's really great advice. Well, be, oh, sorry. I won't do it again. It's my turn still. Do it again. Because this is a really good one. Um, so, because, because some people right now are like, oh, well, but I'm confused now because they've always told me that I shouldn't change the copy and blah, blah. But what Mary Lynn is saying, I believe, is that in the audition process, yes. she would like to hear you ad lib a little bit, maybe throw a little bit of yourself in there, and it's great. Obviously, when it's time to do the actual job, yeah. these words have been approved by a legal department maybe right. and all that stuff, so maybe you don't have the freeway there to, to make up words, but... They're not going to... You know, the, the purpose of your audition is to get the job. It's not yes. the session. Yeah. Yes. 
It's to get the job. It's to get notice. And if you've ever sat in on a casting session, no matter how good everybody is, you all fit the specs, so you're all going to sound alike. Yeah. No matter how good you all are, by the time you get to about the fifth or sixth person reading the same piece, of, it's really boring. It's Charlie yeah. Brown's it's like, teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. yeah. If that's really what yeah. it is, and a, a lot of times I'll do this in my workshops, I'll bring a casting session so the actors, it sinks ah. in. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah, I see. And I'm telling you, we could have the cream of the crop reading. But for the person who's listening and ultimately deciding on a voice, yeah. when you hear, you know, the same boring piece of copy, yeah, red, yeah. Red, 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 it's so when somebody does something different, even if it's just, you know, like a, a chuckle, it kind of jars you. Exactly. Right? And that's why I kind of, okay, goes to the right side of the desktop. You see? Well, and yeah. so often in the session, they'll say, they'll want you to ad lib or they'll, they'll encourage you or they'll say, oh yeah, throw in something. And a lot of times, I mean, I've done spots where I hear it and then I go, oh, they used it. <laughs> it's kind but of they didn't fun. book you, but they might have used your ad lib. Yeah. I know a yeah. lot of actors have I told know. me that. They're I'm like, like yeah. yeah, I heard my ad lib. What's, uh, hmm. what's the union rate <laughs> for a usage of ad lib? Yeah, <laughs> for a free ad lib there. <laughs> um, yeah, that does happen sometimes. And again, like I said, it's not, it's not really about the session, it's getting you booked for the session. Yes. It's, it's just getting, you know, like a little cowbell, hey, here's mm -hmm. Stacy. Yeah. you know, getting some attention to your read. Yeah. That is great advice, and yeah. that's gonna help you guys make some money this Well, and year. it's gonna be like, hey, this is gonna be a cool person to spend. 30 minutes, 90 minutes, exactly. two hours with. Exactly. Or an ongoing campaign, do we wanna spend 12 spots worth of time with this person? Exactly, so. I've had so many clients say to me, um, and this is why I always tell actors, and, and we'll talk about this later, you know, with my directions, is that, you know, they want to hear just the slightest change on your take two, and whether it be, you know, an emotion change or some kind of trigger that changes, a, you know, the tone in your voice, mm -hmm. or just an ad lib, but it's something that they're going to say, oh, you made my job easier. You just brought some kind of fun to the party here. You're going to be fun at the session. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys took some notes and got some great information there, because I know we did, yeah? Yes. Join us next week for part two with Mary Lynn Whistler. And keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VO Buzz Weekly. We'll see you next time, you guys. And just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.